My name is Paul Lambert, um, and I am the chair of the Department of Otolaryngology at Neck Surgery here at MUSC. Very privileged to lead a group of 14 physicians, all of whom are subspecialists uh, within the broad field of otolaryngology. Uh, so after our training, uh, we're prepared to go out and practice a general specialty. But here at the Medical University of South Carolina, each of the physicians have elected to specialize in a certain area of the broad specialty. So we have specialists in allergy, in head and neck cancer, in hearing and balance issues, which happens to be my particular area, in sinus uh, disease, uh, facial plastic and reconstructive surgery, sleep, voice and swallowing. So we have subspecialists in each of those particular areas. My general focus is on patients with hearing loss and balance problems, facial nerve, so weakness of the side of the face, tumors of the skull base. I interface a considerable amount with neurosurgery. We do a number of these cases together. Cochlear implants for patients who are either born deaf, children who are born deaf, or adults who subsequently lose the, their hearing. Uh, congenital abnormalities of the ear. We have maybe one of the top three or four practices in the country for children born without an ear or an ear canal. Um, complex infections of the ear to the, mundane, to the mundane, such as a hole in the eardrum. So we do the full gamut of, of ear uh, problems. I think there are a number of things. First of all, as I alluded to earlier on, we are subspecialists within the broad field of ENT or, or otolaryngology. So we focus in a very defined area. We limit our practice to that. As a result, we become very skilled in that one area. Um, it's all we do day in and day out. We're able to keep up on the latest technologies in that area, the latest research in that area. And so I think we, we bring just a little bit more expertise uh, to the table than, say, a, a general person would who has to keep up on a half a dozen or, or even a dozen different subspecialty areas of ENT. So it's the narrow focus that allows a great in-depth um, knowledge base and, and ability to treat everything from the very um, common to the, to the most complex. Well, I think being at an academic center, um, there are several things that are advantageous. First, you have access to 600 of some of the very best physicians uh, in the country. Uh, so our ability to quickly consult or interface with these other physicians is, is critical. Uh, the fact that we share a, an electronic medical record with, with all the different physicians means that once a person comes to MUSC and has their care delivered here, then we're, uh, uh, their medical record becomes quickly available uh, to us, and so medication issues, uh, allergies, and so forth can be uh, substantiated. And I think at an academic center, one expects, should expect, and certainly we deliver, on the ability to give the latest uh, research uh, opportunities for patients with various problems. Um, so we're able to translate discoveries made in the laboratory to the, to the bedside or to the clinic. I trained at Duke for eight years, both as an undergraduate and medical student, and then to University of California, Los Angeles, UCLA, for my general otolaryngology training, and then did a fellowship, which allows me to focus just on ear issues um, at the House Group, which is also in Los Angeles, and I think recognized by most people as really being the premier training program for otology, which is the ear, and neurootology, which is the interface of the ear uh, with the brain. To build one of the truly elite departments of ear, nose, and throat in the country, and we've certainly done that. We're recognized by U.S. News and World Report as one of the very top programs in the country. Uh, this is our third consecutive year within that ranking. Uh, I mean, it is an incredible privilege for me to 
be associated with this department and to have recruited just some amazing people in all the various subspecialties of, of our fields. It was that ability to create something and to be a part of um, just a phenomenal team of, of physicians and researchers that um, already existed at MUSC when I arrived 12 years ago.